Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are looking at the serial peripheral on the MSP430, and we're finally at a point now where we're going to try to do an example. Not just try, we're going to do an example. So the task that we have before us is we are going to just send out a piece of data, okay? And we'll do this. We'll do 4D hex. And we are just going to continually transmit out this out of the UART peripheral over and over and over. And so what we'll do is we'll set up the UART system, and then we will create a main loop that basically just drops 4D into the transmit buffer. And then in order to give a little bit of time between transmissions, we'll do a little for loop delay, and then we'll repeat. So our entire main loop will be store 4D into transmit buffer, and then do a delay loop and then repeat forever. And what we'll see is we'll see the binary codes uh, for 4D be shifted out in a serial UART frame out of one of the pins on the launchpad board. And what we'll do is we'll actually put an oscilloscope on it and we'll watch it. Okay, so our task is to set up the UART and we wanna start with a baud rate of 115, 200. So let's just, let's just, that's our spec right now. And where we wanna pump this out is let's choose to do this on the A1 serial peripheral, okay? And that happens to have its transmit pin connected to port four bit three. And that comes out on the launch pad board on a pin that we'll be able to connect the oscilloscope to. So that's our marching orders. We're, we're using the A1 UART peripheral and we're gonna transmit 4D continually out at a rate of 115, 200 baud. Okay, so the first step is this. Which clock do we choose? Our choice is gonna be either A clock or SM clock. And so you sit here and you go, well, which one do I choose? Well, it turns out you need to use SM clock to achieve the 115, 200 baud rate. And that's because if you remember, you go back to this table and you say, okay, which values uh, can I actually achieve? Which baud rates can I achieve for these two clocks that I have? And it turns out that a clock's too slow. It doesn't, it doesn't go fast enough to be able to achieve the 115, 200 rate. So we have to use SM clock, okay? So yeah, that's it. Uh, this table also gives us some interesting information because it gives us which mode we're gonna be in. And so if you remember, to determine the mode, the first thing that you do is you come out here and you divide the, the clock frequency, BR clock, by the baud rate you want. So if I came in here and I said uh, one, megahertz divided by 115 200 what i get is 8.68 okay so i have to divide down the clock uh by eight in order to get close to my baud rate the good thing about that is that per the data sheet since that prescalar divider integer is less than 16 i'm in what they call low power low frequency mode so the uso s16 bit is a zero and when that's a zero, I just put the integer part of that number into my baud rate register, okay? And so that's why we're able to say, okay, eight is what I'm gonna divide SM clock down to. And if you think about where that goes, if you look at the baud rate control word, uh, which is UCA, and now it's gonna be A1, and then it's BRW for baud rate word, this entire 16-bit register is simply the prescalar setting. So I can just dump integer eight into this register and that will divide down the clock, assuming that I'm in the low frequency mode. So that setting is what I put right here when I set up the baud rate generator to divide it down by eight, okay? All right, so that's cool. Now that, remember that gets us close, but it doesn't get us exactly or as close to we can at 115, 200. So we have to use the prescaler, or excuse me, we have to use modulation. So now let's think about the modulation. If I go back to my trusty table, I come over here and I say, okay, well, if I'm in USO S16 equals zero, which means low frequency, that means I don't use the first stage modulator, which is fine, okay? I'm gonna use the second stage modulator. So the, the setting from the table in the data sheet says use, put hex D6 into these bits, the UCBRS uh, bits. And now you, go, you sit there and you think, well, where does that exactly go, okay? So I wanna know exactly where that goes. If I go out and look at the control register where these bits are, I see I have the, the modulation control word register. And within here, there's multiple bits, right? So there's multiple bit fields in here. One of them is the UCBRS, and that's where we wanna put the D16, or D6, okay? 
and that's good. Uh, but then there's other bits in here. So what about the these bits right here, the UCBRF? Well, that's the first stage modulation, and we're not going to use them. And then you have some reserved bits, which bits which we don't use. And then finally, here's our UCOS16, which tells us whether we're in oversampling or low frequency. And it turns out we are going to be uh, we're going to have a zero in this field. So when you look at this register in its entirety, notice that we're only using the upper eight bits of this word and everything below the lower eight bits are zero. That's why I can simply write straight to this register and say UCA1 MCTLW is equal to X2600. So I'm going to form a 16-bit word that brings all these bits together and I'm going to just dump it into this register. And I do that because it's a lot easier to do that than to try to do like the bit set and bit clears to try to determine which ones of these I'm going to bit set and bit clear. For me, it just was easier to, to do it that way. So when I do this, if I do those settings, okay, I select SM clock, I set the uh, prescaler to 8, and I set the modulation to this value, I will generate a 115-200 clock that is then ready to be used by the shift register. And what happens is that I'm going to dump this in here and it'll automatically shift it out. But I also have framing options that I need to set up. <laughs> so, so you're like, well, okay, which, what are framing options are we going to use? We're going to use a lot of the default framing options. And what I mean by that is I want to use some of these settings that uh, occur in this control word register uh, that come out of default. So for example, remember, if I come out of, out of uh, reset, these have default values in them. And these are great values. They actually are the ones that represent the most common UART frame. And so that means there's no parity, LSB first, 8-bit length, and one stop bit. So I get those for free when I just come out of reset. And so I'm going to use those default framing options. And that will actually simplify my code quite a bit because I don't have to worry about setting these up. Okay. Now, we set up the UART. And remember, we have to put it into reset, set all those settings, and then take it out of reset. And then the next step is to configure your pin on the MCU. And so remember, we're going to try to drive this out on the UART TX for A1, which happens to share a pin with port 4 bit 3. Now, that actually comes out to this pin right here. There's a J101 header, and it's the one on the launchpad board that has these black uh, jumpers on it. And we're going to actually be able to pull that jumper off, and we'll be able to uh, view the signal using the oscilloscope. So that's where this UART transmit is actually going to go. It's going to be right there. And we'll actually we'll look at it when it's banging. So the, the setup to actually get this pin to use the UART function is this setting. There's two configuration registers. One's called the port 4 select 1 register, and one's called the port 4 select 0 register. And the way that these work in conjunction is you go to bit 3 in each of them, and you give it a setting of 0, 1. And so we do these two settings, and that switches this pin on the MCU to instead of using port 4 bit 3, we're going to use the TX line that comes out of the UART. Okay. <laughs> All right. Once we do that, all we are set up, and then we can just dump a value, in this case hex 4D, into the transmit buffer, give a little bit of delay, and then it'll automatically be shifted out. Oh boy, all right, <laughs> here we go. So we are firing up CCS, and we are about to do our first serial peripheral example. So file new CCS project, if you would. And let's call this, uh, we're still in the C programming language, so let's call it C, and then uh, let's call it uh, UART, and then we'll do a TX1 sending byte at 115-200. Okay, so there's our project, empty main only. All right, so now here we go. We got our little buddy. There's our skeleton. I'm going to nuke that, and here we go. Okay, so first and foremost... What we got to do is let's set up the UART. Okay, so we're going to set up the UART. And what I'm going to do is first, whenever you set it up, you have to put it into software reset. So the first thing we have to do is go UCA1CTLW0, and I'm going to set the UCS soft or software reset bit. Okay, so this is going to be put UART A1 into software reset. All right, so at this moment in time, you got to be like, holy cow, thank you header file 
because all of the configuration registers for the UART, in fact, everything, UCA1CTLW0, is set up for us. That label is already set up for us in the header file, as is the mask for the UC software reset. So by setting that bit, the UART is, is in reset, and that is important because you have to make sure that when you do these settings, it doesn't accidentally shift something out. But luckily for us, these headers are, are set up, these uh, masks. Okay, next thing is let's get the clock going, okay? So we have three settings to get the clock going. The first is, uh, if you recall, we got to get here. Yeah, we got to do the select SM clock, set the, the prescaler, and set the modulator. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is... <clears throat> Let's do the clock select. So I'm going to go UCA1 CTLW0. And within that register, there is some bits that are associated with UCSSEL. And we have a mask that if we go underscore underscore SM clock, this will choose SM clock for UART A1. So we've just now done that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the prescaler value into the UCA1BRW. That's the baud rate word. And I'm just going to drop 8 into it. So I'm going to put, I'm going to give it as an integer. And that is going to do set uh, prescaler to 8. So that's going to divide our 1 megahertz SM clock down by 8. That gets us close, but we need to do a little modulation. So I'm going to do UCA1MCTLW, and I can just drop 0x, and I remember I got to go D600, and then that configure, configure modulation settings. But also remember that this is and the uh, OS, what is that bit? It's low power, so low freak mode. <clears throat> okay, so that's where... That bit is, remember this bit right here <laughs> that we just looked at? Uh, where is it? You know what I'm talking about. Why am I going back? UCOS16. So by doing this, you actually configure that into low frequency mode. And then you also configure the second day, secondary modulation stage. And you put zeros into the first stage modulation. And you can do an equals and it just overwrites everything in there. This also works too. So you can do a bitwise mask on that. It's the exact same information. We'll try, I think in the book I did this. Uh, and yeah, that's fine too. But you can do it equals also. But anyway, we've selected our SM clock, prescaler, and our modulation settings. And now what we need to do is let's let's do our ports, okay? And then we'll, we'll do the ports and then we'll take the whole thing out of uh, software reset. Okay, so I'm gonna do, uh, do, 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 actually let's take it out of software reset. So <laughs> now let's do the ports. Port for SEL1, and I need to clear bit uh, bit three. So I gotta go tilde bit three. Okay, so now this one right here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do port four select one and port four select zero. And this is bit three on both of them. And bit three, they're in two configuration registers. I'm trying to get into here the value 0, 1. Okay, so I have to do it in two steps. So I go bit port 4 select 1 register, and I go ahead and clear bit 3 of that. And then the next one is I go port 4 select 0, and I'm going to set bit 3. And what that does is it puts UART TX or UART A1 TX on port 4 bit 3. Okay, so that's how I configure that. And then let's, let's turn on the IO just in. PM, this is our habit, PM5, CTL0, and I'm going to clear the, la, <laughs> the uh, lock LPM5. So then this is going to be turn on IO, okay? And you can play around with taking that out and see if it makes it matter. But anyway, now let's take it out of reset. <clears throat> so then we go set up UR. This was uh, set up ports. And now let's take this buddy out of software reset. Okay, so I'm going to do, actually, I'll just copy this. So I'm going to take it out of reset by clearing this bit now. So I go ampersand equal tilde. And at this point, we have set up the UART, okay? So we put it in a software reset, configured the clock. This got me the baud rate. I chose the clock, divided it by eight, set the modulation settings. This gives me 115, 200. And then I went ahead and I used all the default framing options out of reset. So that gave me no parity, eight bits, one stop bit, LSB first. So I didn't have to do anything. And then I went ahead and I had to change port four bit three to use the UART 
one a one tx instead of ports and then i turned on the io and then i took it out of software reset and this thing is ready to go so now i'm ready for my main loop so let's go main loop and now what do i want to do so well the whole task that we're here to do is i want to do this i'm going to get in a loop so let's just do a while one and then what i'm trying to do is this i want to put 4d into the transmit buffer so i go uca t x one buff and i'm just going to drop zero x four d so then i'm going to send send four d out over uart a one and now this is a big statement because the way that the uart works i think i mentioned this but every time you write to it every time you do the statement it shifts it out so it's not like you do this one time and since it's at the same value it doesn't it only does it one time it does it continually so it's just going to be like shift 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 out eight bits shift out eight bits shift out eight bits and it's actually 10 bits with the start and the stop bits but we we want to slow it down just a little bit so we can actually uh not override ourselves so let's put a delay loop so i'm going to go four and then i need a loop variable so let's go ahead and come up here and we'll do int i as our loop variable and we'll go four i is equal to zero and then we'll go uh let's just stay in the loop as long as it's less than 10,000 for no reason, that's about right. And then I'll do i is equal to i plus one, and then I'll do that, okay? So this is going to just delay between frames, okay? All right, so there it is. All right, so now I'm sitting here and that should be it. So let's go ahead and save this buddy up and let's, get, let's do some compile and start fixing our errors. Okay, so what errors? Did we get here? So let's go back up here. Lock L M P five. Not right. So it's low power mode. Power L P M. And then this one right here, U C A T X one buff. Uh I think that's right. U C A oh U C A one. U C A one. Okay, so I go ahead and let's fire that little buddy. No still airs? You see oh geez. Slower down here. U C A one T X buff. Okay. Slow down. All right. So there we got that. All right. So now it's bump. It's pumping. And now, holy cow, we are ready. So before we hit run, let's take a look at uh, how we're going to view this. So first and foremost, here's my board. And I'm going to look at this uh, UART transmit with a an oscilloscope. And so it comes out, like we looked at, it comes out on this header right here, J101. And it's on this TX line. So what you want to do is you want to take off this little jumper. Okay, so I'm going to take off the third one from the bottom. And so if I take that jumper off, this is the pin right here. So I want to be on the pin that's closest to the MCU. And the reason I want that is because if I have the jumper there, it sends the UART up the cable. And so I want to just stop it and look at it. Okay, so I have uh, my oscilloscope right here. I'm using an analog discovery two. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab channel one of the oscilloscope and I'm gonna just plug it right on that pin. Okay, and so then uh, to complete my measurement, I'm gonna take the inside of the oscilloscope and put it on a ground and then I'll put the ground of the instrument on this little pin right here. Luckily the launch pad board brings out all these little nice pins for you. So now I have an oscilloscope connected to my UART transmit line. I have grounds on those. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my oscilloscope software, which is waveforms and I'm gonna go scope. And here's my oscilloscope. And now what I wanna do is I'll just, I'll have channel, channel one is my only one and all right there it is so now let's we're gonna run this and take a look <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this down here and i'm st i still have the run button on the screen and i'm gonna hit run and see if i see anything on the oscilloscope okay so i'm gonna go ahead and hit run so now this oscilloscope's waiting for a signal and i go ahead and say go oh <laughs> look at holy buckets look at this something's happening something's happening now it's flashing all over because i don't have my oscilloscope trigger set up so what I want to do is here's my, uh, where's my trigger uh, level here? I think it's this. Nah. Yeah, here's my trigger. So I'm moving the trigger up and I want to trigger on the falling edge, which means, uh, yeah, the start bit. And look at this. So here's my little packet. And if I zoom out, I'm going to zoom in. Oh boy. Look at this. Look at this. 
Oh my gosh. So here it is, all right? So look at this packet. So we are sitting here and we are seeing a UART bitstream. This is continually writing uh, 4D, okay? And so now if you go, how do you know it's 4D? Well, the first thing is it's coming along and then all of a sudden you have a start bit. And then it goes one, zero, one, one, or excuse me, yeah, one, one. And then it goes zero, zero, and then it goes one, zero, and then it has a stop bit. Okay. And so you're looking at this and it's like, wow, that's cool. How do you know that that's 4D? Uh, let me show you a picture, a better picture of how I drew it. I actually took a screenshot of it and then put the ones and zeros on it. So that's our a static shot of this. And if I put the ones and zeros in there, that's what you get. Those are the eight bits of the UART packet. But remember, it's LSB first. So if you took this and rearranged it, you'd have 0100 and then 1101. So if I rearrange that, here's what the binary uh packet that I got was it's zero one zero zero one one zero one lo and behold this is 4d <laughs> so we did it this is awesome and so now you also the thing we want to look at here is I want to see if this is actually at 115 so let's do a little bit of okay so I want to measure the period of this so I'm going to go in analog discovery I can do a quick measurement pulse and I go ahead and I can drop it anywhere in here and I can look at the pulse width so look at this pulse width of a bit period. I know that this is one bit. It's 8.5 ish. So remember that's that. Remember when we did the calculation of what 115 200 is, the bit period is like 8.6 ish. So we're not exactly there, but we're pretty dang close. And the difference has a lot to do with a lot of things. So the, the crystal on the launch pad might not be exactly one megahertz or not producing exactly one megahertz. Maybe the modulation isn't getting it what we wanted. So, but look at this, this is amazing. So I am sending 4D out as a UART frame LSB first, and I can sit here and I can actually see the data being recovered. So now let me, I'm gonna do one last thing before we end here. So I'm gonna zoom way out and I wanna see how long it is between these pulses. So here's the packets. So this is 4D, 4D, 4D. And if I come in between these, they appear to be happening about every 66 milliseconds. And so you go, where does that 66 milliseconds come from? Well, that is actually from the delay loop that I have. So if I come in and look at my code again, this delay that I just kind of arbitrarily popped in there with a for loop, that resulted in about 66 milliseconds of data. So this is awesome. <laughs> okay, it, more importantly, you know what happened? You just did it. You just got the, a UART transmit working on the MSP430 Launchpad board at 115200, and you're consistently putting out a pattern of data that if somebody was on the receiving end, they would say, hey, thank you for sending me 4D. All right, that is it. Congratulations. As always, support my channel by subscribing, and good job.